Good afternoon, Mets fans, and welcome to a Monday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and the World Series kicks off tomorrow night. It is set, and it'll be the Dodgers representing the National League, taking on the Red Sox, representing the American League. Um, are there bigger heels in baseball today than the Los Angeles Dodgers? I say no, there are not. Uh, I want to talk about the World Series matchup. Um, before I do that, though, I want to get into a little bit about the, uh, the latest on the GM search for the Mets and uh, chat about a couple of names that have been formally removed from the process. We'll do that on today's show. I will get into the World Series in just a minute, but first, uh, over the weekend, I think it was either late Friday or early Saturday, um, there was some news on the Mets GM search. Uh, two names have been formally removed after round one has concluded, and it seems as though round one is officially over. Uh, the first round of interviews are in the books, and two names are off the list. One of them was a name that I first heard about two months or so ago on a podcast uh, by Mike Silva. And Mike Silva was talking with, I can't remember his name, but whoever it was, I'm sorry, I can't remember the guy's name, but whoever it was talked about Gary LaRock from the Cardinals as a, as the next GM. Basically said, this is a guy whose name I heard, uh, and this is who's going to be the next GM. Well, that's not going to happen. Uh, Gary LaRock's name was officially eliminated from, uh, from the running. And, you know, I didn't know much about Gary LaRock or LaRock, however you pronounce it. Um, I know that he uh, had a background with the Mets. He was with the Mets years ago and has been a scouting director for the Cardinals for the last several years. He's got glowing reviews from everyone's favorite time waster, Tony La Russa, uh, who had nothing but good things to say about him. But last week I listened to the Shea Anything podcast and it was interesting to hear Andy Martino talk about the reporting that he's uh, done and the feedback that he's gotten about Gary LaRoque. And he talked about him being a real kind of politician uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the front office and not in a good way. So I I'm kind of glad to hear that his name has been removed from the running um, for that reason alone. I, the last thing the Mets need as the general manager or player operations, baseball operations, VP, whatever they're going to call this person, the last thing they need is a guy who, um, <coughs> excuse me, who, um, you know, doesn't give straight answers and talks in circles. And and that's just that's the last thing the Mets need right now as the, the sort of the face of the front office. Um, the other name that's, that was removed uh, was uh, Dejon Watson, or however you pronounce that. Um, I probably butchered that as well. Um, but that's another name that was removed. So two men are gone. Um, the list remains um, sort of wide open. There's been no real official announcement from the Mets, and that was the other thing that came out of Shea Anything last week, where Andy Martino basically said, look, the, the Mets really aren't publicly commenting on this at this point. All of the names that we're hearing aren't officially being released by the Mets. It's just back channels and second, uh, secondhand information at this point. Um, but uh, Kim... NG, NG, however you pronounce that name, is uh, is one of the names that's still in the mix. Um, Brody Van Wagenen's name is still in the mix. Um, Heim Bloom is another name that's still in the mix. So there's a bunch of names that are still out there, but no one really knows where this is going to go. Um, I'll be interested to see um, whether Fred Wilpon has uh, more of a role in uh, the second round of interviews. And uh, as news comes out on that, I think as the World Series nears the end, you know, as I said, it kicks off tomorrow. Uh, as the World Series nears its end, I think we'll hear more and more about the interview process um, wrapping up um, or, or maybe ramping up is the better word for it. Uh, so we'll talk, uh, we'll talk more about that as more news becomes available about it. Sorry about that. My, uh, my Wawa break. I was going to try and get my sandwich for lunch. Uh, so, the other name that I didn't mention in the uh, the GM search was uh, um, Doug Melvin, who is uh, 
who is the GM for the uh, for the uh, Brewers, who just lost in the NLCS. That's actually a good transition because, um, yes, the Brewers lost. Um, they lost to the Dodgers, who were stuck once again seeing in the World Series to repeat them themselves as World Series losers. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's going to be the case. You know, I, of course, was completely wrong. I predicted the uh, Brewers and the Astros. Um, and, of course, I was wrong on both fronts. <laughs> so, uh, the Red Sox and the Dodgers. And, you know, I'm kind of pissed at myself for even going against what I'd been saying for the last, like, month or so. Which is the Red Sox are the most complete team in baseball. The Red Sox are the most complete team in baseball. Um, and I, I just don't see how the Dodgers can beat them, but we'll see. That's why they play the games, right? Uh, I, I did mention that I think the Dodgers are going to be the big heels coming into, uh, into the World Series. I just don't see a ton of people outside of Los Angeles rooting for the Dodgers. Um, and the other Mets tie-in to, uh, to this is, is, of course, Manny Machado did not have himself a very PR friendly NLCS um, to the point where he was sort of like actively healing the crowd uh, in Milwaukee. I mean, he was a, he was embracing his villain role and, you know, I, I don't know. I, I know that tons of Mets fans on Mets Twitter are clamoring for Manny Machado and they want Manny Machado. And look, I, I'm sure that he'd be a terrific player, but the, the finance side alone makes it almost impossible for him, for him to be a Met, and I'm kind of glad about that because I just feel like th the attitude that this guy has, the, the thin skin that he's showed, um, I just don't know how it's going to play in New York over the course of a full season. I would much rather let the Yankees find that out and spend, you know, $400 million to get him and to have him be a whiny little bitch who can't take the criticism uh, that comes along with playing in, in New York. Um, I, I'd rather the Yankees take that chance than the Mets, to be completely honest. I'd rather spend the, the Mets spend the money on the bullpen where I think it's more appropriately allocated um, on multiple arms as opposed to just spending whatever they can on one arm and, and hoping for the best with the rest of them. Uh, had a good exchange with a few folks on Twitter over the weekend about that, actually, and um, I'm I'm souring on on Craig Kimbrell. I just feel like he's a heart attack. Um, I, I know he's the best closer in baseball by you know on paper. I don't know, man. I just feel like he is got Benitez written all over him, and I, I just don't know that the Mets need that <laughs> at the back of the bullpen. I frankly would rather them spend the money spread that money out across two or three relievers uh, and again do the same thing with the money that they could allegedly or potentially spend on, on a Machado. Uh, go out and get Adam Adovino. Go out and get bring back Jerry's Familia. Um, go out and get um, uh, you know any number of these bullpen arms who aren't going to cost the Kimbrel level dollar uh, and, and, and save yourselves the, the heart attack that is Craig Kimbrel. We will be seeing more of Kimbrel though in the World Series. It does kick off tomorrow night. Uh, I am predicting that the Red Sox will win the World Series. As I said many times, they are a complete team, and I'm um, pissed at myself for going against that and picking the Strohs. Um, really, as far as the Astros go, nothing for them to hang their heads about. They, they fought a good series. Um, they, they ran up against the buzzsaw. I mean, the, the Red Sox are a really good team. The Strohs were red hot coming into this series, and the Red Sox just shut them down. And I feel they're going to do the same thing to uh, to the Dodgers. Um, the Dodgers fought for seven games to uh, advance to the World Series. And as far as the Brewers go, they have really nothing to hang their heads about either. Um, you could question some of the decisions that Craig Council made in in, in the bullpen usage, but interestingly, there was an article in Sports Illustrated last week where Craig Council was talking about what he did last year, and in last offseason, he spent the entire playoffs watching every game and taking detailed notes and taking a real account of what these different managers do during games and in games, and 
uh, it was just interesting to, to see that they're you know the Brewers are eliminated and um, won't be going to the World Series but to see how council um, the moves that council made and, and sort of justifying some of those moves uh, he, he justified a lot of those moves in this in this article in this Sports Illustrated article and this was uh, this was long before he went to Josh Hader in game seven as his first arm out of the bullpen so it's long before he used Jeremy Jeffers probably one too many times in the series. And, you know, Joe Buck actually made an interesting point during the broadcast talking about how, you know, a bullpen can be really solid over a three-game series, but when you're playing the same team for seven games, potentially seven games, which this one obviously did go out to, uh, when you're playing the same team for seven games and you're using the same bullpen arms, the deceiving delivery that some of these guys have and the nature of their stuff it becomes clearer when you're facing them five times in a row, you know, four, four games in a row. Um, I wonder how much of that affected the, the effectiveness of, of Jeremy Jeffers. Who knows? You know, did, did Craig Council pull his starters too soon? I say yes, but who knows? So Dodgers, Red Sox, World Series... It's going to be over by the weekend, folks. That's my prediction. Four game, uh, five games, rather. The Red Sox will uh, will win the World Series in five. And I will be back to talk more about, as I said, the GM search as it continues to unfold. If there's anything fun to talk about with the World Series games that pick off, uh, kick off tomorrow night, uh, maybe I'll come back on Wednesday uh, and talk about game one if there's something worth talking about. If not, probably Thursday I'll be back with another video. So until then... Uh, follow me on Twitter if you're not already doing so, at Mr. Underscore Met. Thanks for watching today, and as always, let's go Mets.